You like to ride in the mud? You like to go as deep as you can? Well, Super ATV's got you covered with our new snorkel kit. It's gonna keep water out of all those crucial components to keep you riding and on the trail. So let's get to it. So the first thing you're gonna wanna do is, is lift your bed up out of the way or you can remove it. We've decided just to tilt ours back and we went ahead and disconnected the shock for the bed as well. That way we can get it dumped back as far as we can. Once you've done that, you're gonna come down here and you're gonna remove the intake tube off of the air box. Just gonna disconnect this clamp right here. Get it loosened up enough and we'll just pull this tube right off. Just let it hang out of the way. And then we have our crankcase ventilation tube. It's gonna be right here. We'll just go ahead and pull it right off the air box as well. Let it hang down out of the way. Then we're gonna reach up underneath, right back here on the intake side of where it's pulling air from the outside going to the air box. There'll be a clamp. We'll go ahead and remove the clamp. Or at least loosen it enough to where we can remove our hose. Got it loose. We're just gonna reach right up underneath here. We got it pulled off of the air box now. So now there shouldn't be anything connected to the air box. It should just be connecting right here, here, and then you'll have one bolt on the outside of the frame as well. We'll take our 10 millimeter. You can just loosen this outside bolt up and then these two inside bolts have to be completely removed. <clears throat> so once we have these bolts removed here, we'll set them aside and we'll take an air box. Just go ahead and completely remove it from the machine and we'll set it aside for the time being. Then we're gonna come in here and this tube right here, going to the top of the clutch cover. We're gonna do the same thing. We're just gonna loosen our clamp up. We'll remove our spark plug wires off of it. We'll just wiggle this tube right off of the clutch cover. We'll go ahead and completely remove it from the machine. Then we're gonna follow our crankcase ventilation tube all the way down to the motor. You'll have to reach down and underneath. If you just follow the tube, you'll feel where it, you'll feel where it connects at. Just go ahead and disconnect it from the motor, just like this. We'll set it aside as well. And then this tube right here will also be removed. We'll go ahead and loosen our clamp up. Pull the tube off. We'll just kind of tuck it back out of the way. Then all this wiring, we're gonna to wanna to push it towards the exhaust manifold on the motor. Just tuck it all back in behind the clutch cover. And then we're gonna grab our eight millimeter. And we're gonna remove all of the bolts out of the clutch cover. Once you have all your hardware removed from the clutch cover, you can go ahead and remove it from the machine. We'll just go ahead and set it aside as well. Then we'll grab our 15 millimeter socket on our impact. We'll go ahead and remove the bolt out of the secondary clutch. and remove our bolt there. Now we're gonna grab the outer sheath off of the clutch. Go ahead and remove it. Set it down. 
and we'll go ahead and we'll pull our belt off of here. And this is a very important part. You want to make sure that you lay your belt out the same way that it came off. So it's just like this. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to lay it right up against the tire exactly how it came off. And we'll grab the inner sheath off our secondary and we just drop the shim. You want to make sure that you don't lose it. A lot of times whenever you go to pull that secondary off, you'll, it'll drop. Looks like that right there and it'll sit right here inside of the secondary. So we'll set that aside just like that. We'll grab our 21 millimeter and we'll remove the bolt out of the primary. Then we'll grab our primary clutch removal tool, which can be purchased from superatv.com. We'll go ahead and stick it right into the primary. And you'll just want to thread it in by hand. Get a good amount of threads on it. Run it up there until it gets tight by hand. And then we'll grab a 27 millimeter and we're going to tighten this up until it pops the primary off. Right there, we got our primary off. We'll go ahead and remove our tool here. We're gonna grab a 10 millimeter socket and we're gonna go through and remove all of the bolts securing the inner clutch cover to the transmission and motor. Once all the hardware is removed, the inner clutch cover will come right off. We'll go ahead and remove it and we'll set it aside for the time being as well. Once we have the inner clutch cover removed, we're gonna head inside the machine. The next thing that we're gonna do is remove the upper portion of the seat, as well as flip up the lower portion. On the upper portion of the seats, there's gonna be two screws on the driver's side, and then three screws on the passenger side. I'll show you where those are at here in just a second. But we're gonna go ahead and flip up the lower portion of our seat here. Then go ahead and remove our storage compartment from underneath the seat. Then we'll flip up the passenger side just to get everything out of the way. And then once you've removed the two screws on the back side of the seat, you'll just lift it right up. And as you can see here, you have a screw hole here as well as here. The screws will come through right here on these two holes where the seat goes up against it. There'll be two T30 Torx screws. And we'll do the same thing over here on the passenger side and pull the seat belt out of the way. Lift the seat straight up. And as you can see, this one has the same spots where the screws go in. This side will actually have four, and all those mounting locations will coordinate with the holes in the seats. So then we're gonna come right here and we're gonna go ahead and loosen this clamp up. We'll pick up on this tube and completely remove it. We'll come right here. And on this big cross section here, you're gonna have a screw right here, as well as a screw right here. So you'll wanna go ahead and remove those as well. And you can just pick straight up. And that'll remove from there. And we'll run around here to this opposite side and loosen this clamp up. And we'll just completely remove this tube. And we'll go ahead and set this aside as well. And this tube right here, we can push it back down. Through the hole. And we can go around to the back side and go ahead and remove it from the machine. We had already disconnected it on the motor side, so we just went ahead and removed it completely from the machine. So next we're gonna grab our inner clutch cover. We're gonna grab our gaskets that come provided in the kit. We're gonna go ahead right here on this side, <clears throat> the secondary side, we're gonna use 100% RTV silicone here. We're gonna fill this circle up with a nice, good, healthy coat. like that. We're going to take our new seal that's provided in the kit. We're just going to squish it right down in here, just like that. And any excess 
just kind of want to smear it around the inner portion of this gasket. Just make sure you get it down in there. Nice and tight there. Just like that. Then any excess you can kind of take to the top. Just kind of give it a good smear. That way it seals it up. Nice and tight. And it's all right if you get it around the bolt holes because we're gonna go ahead and silicone the bolts up as well. We're just trying not to make too much of a mess here. Silicone can be pretty messy. We're gonna try to get it smeared out to the point to where it's not so thick. Just about like that. And then we have some excess here. We'll go ahead and we'll just put it right over in this area. Now while we're letting this dry, we're gonna go ahead and remove all the screws that are secure in the top portion of our clutch on. All our tubes here. Some of them will be directly threaded into the clutch cover, and then others will have nuts on them. So for the ones that have the nuts, what you wanna do is come in here on the inside, and right here on the outside, put your wrench on the nut. Just go ahead and remove the hardware. Go ahead and remove the tubes as well as this plate here. And we're gonna get our clutch cover flipped up. It's sitting like this. And we're gonna go around right through here, put a good layer of silicone. And we'll go right here and put some silicone around the lip. And down in this area right here, we're gonna kinda extend our silicone out, as well as right here. Put a nice little clump there. All right. Once we've done that, we can go ahead and reinstall. Go through here and get a couple screws started. And if you have holes like this out here on the outside that don't have silicone coming through them, you'll just want to kind of dip your bolts down into the silicone a little bit. That way there's silicone on the threads whenever you go to put them in. Like this one down here didn't have any silicone coming through the hole. Just going to silicone up the bolt. Put the bolt in. That's just going to help make sure that we're good and sealed up here. Now we're gonna do the same thing on our threaded bolts with the nuts. We're just gonna flip it back over to how we had it. We're gonna take these, feed them through the holes. And 
Now we're just gonna reinstall our plate, just like that. We're just gonna go through and tighten up our hardware. So right here on the primary side of the inner clutch cover, we're just gonna run a good bead of silicone all the way up into each of these pockets and around. So we'll just go through. It's all right if you cover up the bolt holes a little bit. And down here, you're just gonna wanna kinda surround this hole as well. Again, doesn't have to be anything crazy, just a little bit. And now we're just gonna let this dry and then we'll get it reinstalled onto the machine momentarily. So next we're gonna be installing our bellow to our transmission vent tube. We're gonna need our straight connector, our barb fitting, and our bellow. And all we're gonna do is go right in here, locate our transmission vent line, install our barbed fitting onto the line, then take our bellow, install it to the other side of the barb. You may have to kind of twist it around, make sure it goes on there all the way. And then for the time being, we're just gonna lay it right up on top of the motor. And then later on, we'll zip tie it out of the way in a good location. So before we can reinstall our inner clutch cover, we wanna install our gasket that's provided in the kit. We put just a very, very small bead of silicone back and behind it just to hold that gasket in place. Not enough to where it's gonna squish out or anything like that. We're pretty well dried up. Before you reinstall your inner clutch cover, you're gonna make sure that you put just a little bit of silicone on each of your screws. We've already done this, so we're gonna go ahead and get it installed. So we're just gonna slide it into position. I'm gonna pull any hoses or anything out of the way. Just go through, get all your hardware started. And then once we have all our hardware started, we'll go ahead and we'll fully tighten it. I always like to tighten it side to side. And just double check to make sure nothing's pinched back in behind the clutch cover. So now we're gonna grab our primary clutch and get it reinstalled. hand tighten our bolt and we're going to take the rear sheath of our secondary slide it on and then make sure we take our shim install it back into the groove where it goes and we're going to take our belt slide it around the primary and then have it just kind of hanging over here on the secondary so we put our outer sheath back on Take our outer sheath, we'll line up our rollers with our helix. Take our bolt. We'll go ahead and get it reinstalled. We'll go ahead and tighten up our primary. We're just gonna run the bolt in and then we'll torque it to factory spec. Same as well with the secondary. We'll run it in and then we'll torque it. And we'll go ahead and spin our secondary to get our belt back up into position. Just like that. And we can go ahead and reinstall our clutch cover. So the next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna come inside the machine and we're gonna look at this back panel here. So as you can see, you have holes here and then down here, the lower set of holes, you're gonna drill through on the farthest outside on the right, on the lower section, farthest outside on the left, on the lower section. You're gonna to wanna to drill that hole large enough to fit an eight millimeter bolt. Once you've drilled the hole, which we already have ours drilled, you're gonna take the provided clip nuts. Now these clip nuts, they're gonna slide right up on this back bar 
right where you just drilled your hole. So we're just gonna pop them right in the place. We wanna make sure that the threaded side is towards the inside of the machine. So in order to get the clip nuts on, you may have to remove the push pins off the top of this back panel. Just like so, just go through and pull out only the top ones. And just slide it out of the way enough that you can reach back in behind here and put your clips on. Just like that. Just like that right there. And you can go ahead and reinstall your clip. So next we're gonna grab our snorkel bracket and we're gonna grab our M8 by 30 millimeter Allen hardware with our M8 lock washer, flat washer. And then because today we are utilizing a Super ATV rear windshield, we'll be using all four of the provided spacers and we'll install them just like so. We're gonna stick our bolt through our bracket, stick a spacer as well as another spacer. And then we'll line our bolt up with the clip nut we just previously installed. Get it started on there. Get the same exact thing over here on the opposite side. Next, we're gonna grab our self-tapping screws that are provided in the hardware kit. There's gonna be two different ones. We're gonna grab the longer of the two. Then we're gonna go right here on the holes in the bracket. And install them right into the frame. And then we're gonna get our riser tubes and fittings installed. So next we're gonna grab our riser pipe as well as our fitting for our riser pipe to our hoses that are gonna come up to our snorkels. And we're also gonna grab our lock nut. We're gonna thread this lock nut down onto the fitting about three quarters of the way. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna come over here to our bracket, slide it through there like that. Just thread it on there until it's tight. And then I like to take this lock nut and make sure that it's up against the bottom side of the bracket too as you're tightening it. Another thing, you just wanna make sure that you're applying a good healthy coat of silicone into the threads of each of these couplings. It's just gonna help them stay together a little bit better there for you. So we're just gonna go through and install the other two riser pipes and fittings. So next we're gonna be installing our snorkel tubes, but before we do that, we're gonna to need to cut a hole out right here we just took a whiz wheel and cut a square large enough so that we can fit two of these tubes. That way they can go up and attach to our fittings. So we're gonna run our hose up through the factory hole in the floor. And once we have it ran through there, we're gonna go ahead and start feeding it out just like that. We're just gonna keep feeding it out so we don't have any slack and we're gonna connect it. So we're gonna get it all lined up, just like that. And we'll go ahead and we'll tighten this clamp down. That way it's on there nice and secure. And we're gonna come right here to this outlet on the clutch. Make sure everything's up and out of the way. We'll slide it right on, just like that. We'll go ahead and fully tighten this clamp as well. Just like that. And then this one will run right up here. So we'll just lay it on top of the motor until we get them all routed. 
Next, we're gonna install our covers to our snorkel tubes. You're gonna do this by getting the small Allen headed hardware that's in the hardware kit. You're just gonna slide your snorkel cover on just like this. And you're gonna take your Allen headed hardware, line up your threaded hole, and then just thread it right into that hole on the top as well as the bottom. And then we're gonna go up here to our riser pipes and we're gonna put some black silicone all the way around it. That way we know it makes a good seal. And we're also gonna put some down inside of our tube. And we'll just slide it right on. Just like this. We'll get it set up straight. And once we have it where we want it, we'll go ahead and wipe off the excess silicone. Just like that. Then we'll repeat the steps for the other two snorkel tubes. The next thing you're gonna to wanna to do is remove your hood, then come up to your coolant reservoir. You're gonna to wanna to remove your cap. As you can see, we already have our fitting installed, but you're gonna to wanna to drill a hole through the center of the cap. Once you've done that, you're gonna grab the 90 degree fitting provided in the hardware kit, put some silicone around the threads, and then thread it into the cap. As you can see, this is what it's gonna look like right here. We'll just go ahead and we'll thread it back on. We're gonna grab this roll of tubing that we have. We're gonna get all the slack and we're gonna make it into a nice and tight roll here. Once we have a nice little roll, what we're gonna do, we're gonna take a zip tie, throw it around it. a couple as it ties around it here. So it'll look just like this and we'll go right here. And go ahead and slide it on that barb fitting just like that and then we'll go through and we'll cut the excess off of our zip ties. And then we're gonna grab our bellow and our other straight fitting. We're gonna go ahead and install straight fitting into the bellow, just like this. We're gonna grab the zip tie here, and we're gonna go over to the passenger side and locate the vent tube for the differential. And as you can see, ours is right here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna slide our bellow into the vent tube. Then once you got it onto the barb, we'll take a zip tie and zip tie it up out of the way. Just like that. And then we'll cut off the excess. And we'll go ahead and reinstall the hood in the front. All right, now we're gonna head back to the rear. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna grab our other 90 degree fitting. Then we're gonna grab our grommet as well as our plug. We're gonna drill a 5 8 hole in the bottom side of the air box. Then on the top side of the air box, we're gonna drill a 3 8 hole. So once we have our holes drilled, we've already done this, we're gonna grab our grommet for our 5 8 hole. We're gonna install the grommet into the previously drilled hole. Just like that. And we're gonna take our plug and insert it right into the grommet. Just like that. 
sure it's securely in there. Then we're gonna take a little bit of silicone and on our 90 degree fitting, we're gonna coat the threads. So that way whenever we thread it in, it makes a nice seal on the air box here. You don't have to get too crazy with the silicone. I just like to put a lot up there on the top so whenever you go to thread it in, it just makes a nice seal. So we'll just thread it right in there. And as you can see, as we spin it, it just makes a nice circular seal right around the fitting. I'm just gonna thread it down in there until it gets pretty tight. So it should look just like this, and just like this. Now we're gonna head back over to the machine and install our other grommet, as well as our other plug. Next, we're gonna grab our crankcase ventilation hose and one of our small clamps, and we're gonna attach the hose to the fitting on the motor where the original crankcase ventilation hose went. So what I like to do is just take my clamp, slide it onto the hose, and then we're gonna feed our hose right down through here. We're just gonna slide it through underneath the oil filter. Slide the hose on. Make sure it goes all the way up onto the fitting as far as you can get it. Once it's all the way up there, we're gonna come from the top with an extension and an eight millimeter socket. We are going to tighten the clamp. So next we're gonna take the previously installed snorkel tubes and we're gonna install them to the actual snorkel. We just wanna grab our large clamps that are provided in the hardware kit. We're just gonna go ahead and get them laid over top of the tube here, just like this. We're gonna take this one that's coming off of the clutch cover. And we're gonna slide it right up on to our fitting. Get it all the way up there, as far as you can get it. Rotate the plant. Get it up here like this so we can get our impact on it to tighten the clamp up. take this one that we ran through the firewall already. We'll lay our clamp down on it. We'll run it right here. Make sure we get it all the way up on there. clamp up, just like that. We're gonna run inside the machine really quick, grab our last tube, connect it, run it through the firewall, then connect it to our snorkel box. So here's our last tube. All we're gonna do is come right here, and we're gonna connect this hose right into the factory intake for the air box. So this is gonna go directly into the air box. We wanna make sure that we get it pushed in there as far as we can. I have to kind of spin it around, work it around a little bit. Then we're gonna take the hose and we're gonna run it right through the hole that we previously cut into the firewall. Start feeding it towards the outside of the machine. So now we're gonna grab our last hose here and connect to the fitting, just as we did with the other three hoses. Just wanna make sure you get it all the way up on there, as far as it'll go. And we'll just go ahead, tighten our clamp up. Just like that. And then we are going to locate the vent line coming off of the gas tank. Ours was laying down out of the way, so we've just located it. We're just gonna pick it up and we're gonna grab our vent tube 
that's provided in the kit. And we're gonna slide this fitting right here, this straight connector, right onto the vent line to the gas tank. So to make sure you get it all the way up on the barb. It can be pretty tough to get it on there. That's just because we want it to be a very tight fit. You don't want to get any water down in your gasoline or anything like that. So we got it all the way up on there. And we're just going to sit it over here, up and out of the way. And then we're going to go ahead and grab our air box. We'll go ahead and start getting that reinstalled. So we've got our air box here. What we're going to do is just apply a small bead, a very small bead of silicone around the edge of the inside of the air box. As you can see, we're not putting very much silicone on here at all. We're putting just enough to kind of hold this gasket in place. It's going all the way around the gasket surface. That. I'm just like to kind of take my gun here and just kind of work the silicone around just so we know it's going to hold this gasket good and make a good seal. So that looks good enough to me. I'm going to take my gasket. As you can see, it's square, so it's obviously just going to lay down in here like this. Kind of just let it slide in position. That's a good thing. The silicone does kind of help you get it positioned properly. I'm going to go through and just kind of push down on it. All the way around you'll hear that silicone kind of popping a little bit and wanting to push up. You don't want a whole bunch of silicone to push out. Just enough. So it should look just like this. So we're going to go ahead and put our air box back together just as it came apart. Just like this. So this is what your air box should look like at this point. We got our new gasket in there. We have our air filter installed. Got our plug, got our fitting. Everything's on there and ready to go. So we're just gonna take it, slide it up from the bottom. And as we're sliding it up from the bottom, I like to go ahead and take this intake hose that we put the grommet and the plug in and just go ahead and slide it back on to the air box. It just makes it that much easier on you. So we're gonna get it slid into place here just as it was, like I said. We're gonna slide our intake hose that's going to our throttle body on our motor. We're gonna slide it onto the air box as well, just like that. And then we'll go ahead and we'll get our 10 millimeter bolts, get them started into the factory clips. Just like this, get it all lined up. Slide it onto the grommet out here on the outside of the frame. We're gonna take our vent line that we just previously attached to the gas tank. We're gonna connect it as well. Just like this right here. Then we're gonna grab our hose. That was our crankcase ventilation hose. We're gonna start feeding it up like this. I'm going to let it hang out of the way for just a second. So now we're going to grab the last of our clamps. We're going to slide it on the end of our crankcase ventilation tube. We're just going to slide it on just like this. And then we're going to go right here to the air box. And we're just going to slide our tube right onto the factory fitting. Once we have it on there, we're just going to go ahead and tighten up our clamp. And then at this point, you're gonna need to roll this hose up twice. We want two good loops. And as you can see, we've drilled a couple holes here into the firewall. The reason that we've done this is so that we can run a zip tie from here to up here and then here to here. That way we can secure our hose to the firewall. So we've already got it kind of looped here a little bit. You wanna really have a nice and tight loop you don't want too much slack hanging over towards the motor and you don't want too much slack to where this is sitting up way high. So what I like to do 
You just kind of lay them on top of each other the best you can. I like to run a zip tie around them just to kind of couple them together. That way they don't move around a whole bunch on me. So see, now we have a pretty good looking loop. We don't have a ton of excess hanging out. And we're gonna go to the inside of the machine here and we're just gonna run them right through the back side of these holes. So like I said, you know, there's no specific way you need to drill these holes. You can drill them here, here, as long as you secure your hose to the back side of the firewall. So I'm just gonna pop in here and feed my zip tie through. And we're just gonna lay it up here in place. As you can see, that secures it to the firewall nice and tight. And we also have holes over here drilled, one here and then one right here. So we're just gonna kind of wrap them through there as well, just to make sure they're nice and secure. All right, so it's nice and secure. As you can see, everything's ran nicely here. And this, this hose here that we told you to connect to the air box, this side will actually just be venting to the atmosphere. So we're just gonna run it straight down. And just let it vent to the atmosphere so it's getting the feed off of the gas tank and then it's going up here to the air box and then we're venting to the atmosphere. The way it's set up is water can't actually push back up through the tube. So it's fine to be laying down there. You can zip tie it to the frame. However you wanna do it, it's totally up to you. So now we're gonna grab the rear portion of our snorkel bracket. It'll be all of the small Allen headed hardware in the kit and you'll grab four of your lock washers as well. So we're gonna take the side that says Super ATV, it's gonna to go towards the top and it's just gonna lip right up underneath of this portion right here. So it'll look just like that and you'll reach in there. Get your screws started. So now that we have everything installed, we're gonna grab our bellow that came off our transmission that we previously told you just to lay out of the way. We're gonna go right around our air tube here. We still have two zip ties left. If you've done everything just like us, you should have two as well, and this will be enough to get bellow hooked up here. And we're gonna have to double a zip tie up. We don't have enough, enough room here for it. We'll just double them up, no problem. And we'll just secure our bellow. Just like that. It doesn't have to be tightened down too tight just so it stays in place. We'll cut off the excess. And then we're gonna talk about what you need to do when it comes to trimming your bed for the snorkel kit to actually fit. So as you can see here, we've made one cut right next to this hole and one next to this hole. This can be judged off of your factory warning label if you still have in your machine. If not, you can just count your holes over, find the two centermost holes, and you'll cut it out and cut them between these two. And you may have to trim it a little bit differently. You know, not every machine's exactly the same, but if you trim it just like this and then trim down these fins back on the front side of the bed, it's gonna fit. So up to this point, your machine should look just like ours. We have everything tied up everything installed. You wanna go through, double check all your clamps, and you know, your silicone's probably still gonna be wet, ours is. We're gonna let our machine sit overnight, and that's how super easy it is. Install Super ATV's snorkel kit on this Polaris Ranger 900. For more information on these snorkels, or any of Super ATV's great products, feel free to give us a call at 855-743-3427, or check us out online at superatv.com. Thanks for watching, and we'll catch you next time.